so here's the ultimate test. Is it waterproof? Is it waterproof? Let's test it out. Hi guys, in this video, I'm gonna be adding a roof to the carport that I built a few months ago. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll put a link in the description below. I also painted the carport a nice gray a few weeks ago so that it can stand the test of time outside in the elements. Now this carport is going to feature lumber construction like the rest of the carport, as well as a big metal roof. And the structure is about 400 square feet. So I need to build it really, really strong because of the summer and fall monsoons that come through here in Arizona with the high winds. So I need to make sure that it is gonna stand the test of time out here in the yard. So first things first, I need to lo load up a bunch of lumber and then take it downtown Phoenix. Let's get going. First trip is done, dropped off the lumber last week and now I'm back. I had to go to Home Depot again to get 16 metal panels, which I'll show you in a second. But now we're headed downtown Phoenix to the property so we can finish this carport build, put a nice roof on it. Let's get to it. All right, guys, I wanted to walk you through my plan for today. It is a beautiful Friday here, sunny day here in Arizona. We have the carport behind me. This is a 336 square foot carport, 24 by 14 feet. And we have the pile of lumber here in the back. We have the roof panels here in the trailer. So I'm really excited to walk through how I'm gonna put a nice big metal roof that is going to make this carport rainproof for the cars underneath it and provide some great shade in the summer. So I'll walk through my process. <clears throat> let's take a look at the carport as well because it's been a couple months since I built it. So let's go take a look. All right, so here's the carport. If you saw my last video, I actually painted it a nice gray. And what I actually did, I got a little bit worried about these cross beams. So I added another 14 foot two by six under here to make it super sturdy. And I did one on this side as well as this side so it has a number of cross braces going across the top so in addition to that we are going to be putting a ton of lumber on top of it so we want to make sure that everything comes together really securely so i'll walk through how i'm going to build a slope on this roof in just a second so here's my plan for the slope when i originally built this i should have just made the front posts higher you know build in that natural slope i built a, a shed behind me actually and it has about a six inch slope works perfectly wasn't thinking I made everything level so now we got to build a secondary roof and slope and here's my plan I'm going to be using uh, two by tens two by eights two by sixes and two by fours to build in a gradual slope across the top here so as you can see the original uh, from a couple months ago is completely level and so what I'm going to do is use these big two by tens and then, like I said, build in a gradual slope across the back and then put those panels on top. And of course, we have to be really, really strong in our build. So I have a ton of metal brackets and we're going to be using a lot of uh, wood to metal connections, a lot of screws, a lot of nails. Uh, so it all comes together because when the storms come through the monsoon season here uh, in probably four to five, six months, we need this thing uh, to not fly away into the neighbor's yard and be super strong. So uh, I'm gonna get started on measuring and cutting and uh, start to slowly shape this slope together.
So I have the first two by 10 in place. I have a big wood clamp on either side to hold it uh, steady. And then I'm gonna be using a couple different types of brackets here for the corners. And uh, this costs a few bucks at Home Depot. I'm gonna use this for each of the sides on each of the beams as we go down the roof. And then also on the other side so that it is held on uh, both sides. I'm gonna be using this 90 degree bracket so that everything comes together really tightly as we work our way down the top of this roof. Okay, so I needed to create some more room because this bracket is actually pretty big, maybe uh, three, or, three or four inches in total, and I, I couldn't get it under here. So I took the Sawzall, uh, cut off top of the post, made it flush with the beam here. And then I also have to avoid this lag bolt. So now it's perfect. I can go right up here. It's flush here and here. So I can get started with hammering that in. And then on the flip side, we're gonna be using another bracket here angle bracket uh, to make sure everything is pushing together on both sides so that this can stay really strong. And then we'll work on building that slope back with all of these two by sixes, 14 feet long. I got nine of them. Those are gonna go across the top here and I'm gonna work on notching out a two by six so that they sit nicely and come together really, really strong. So. I got a lot of work to do ahead of me, but I'm excited to get this first uh, beam in place and then we can get working on the rest.
Okay, a lot of work so far, but I got the two by 10 and the two by eight in place. I'm gonna take a break for lunch, but you can start to see how it's gonna create that gradual slope because we're dropping two inches every four feet as we move our way to the back here. So I still gotta add a two by six over here uh, to finish up. And then we can start adding these 14 foot two by sixes uh, as uh, additional structure to the roof. And that's all gotta be done before we can put panels on uh, to finish it up. So let's keep going. All right, progress check. I've been here for about four hours today and I have gotten the cross beams connected across the top. We have four different connection points. Again, the two by 10 starting there and then the two by eight, the two by six and the two by four. So creating that gradual two inch slope across the 14 feet of the roof. It's beginning to take shape. I'm really excited about it. And now I've got all these 14 foot pieces loaded up across the top. The roof is starting to look like a roof. And then of course the last step are these big eight foot by three foot panels. I got 16 of them to put across the roof. So I wanna show you this slope real quick behind me as it starts to take shape here. So you can see in the front, it's looking really nice and that should be plenty to clear the water in a storm. So, and again, I need to go across the roof. We'll, walk, we'll take a little, little walk around here. I'll show you the full thing. So I got nine two by sixes up here. They need to be spread across all the way here, this 24 foot run. And then uh, I have planned in my head to make them go every 36 inches because that is the width of one panel. And uh, again, I got 16 panels, so we're gonna have uh, one and two, one and two like that uh, stacked across the top. So I'll show you how it's gonna come together. All right, I got the edges secured. I put two screws in each connection point. So we're doing eight screws, three inch screws, big ones uh, on each of these 14 foot two by sixes here. So this one's secure and then the one all the way down there on the end is secure. So we got seven more in the middle. And this is the tricky part because I pulled out the uh, panel here and it's 36 inches across. So what we wanna do is make sure that this edge lines up with each of these and then I'll pull it over here. And so that we have a 36 inch width every time we do this all the way down. And it's uh, just under 24 feet. It's like 30 uh, or sorry, uh, 23 and a half. So um, that leaves us a little bit of room, like a three inch overhang on either side here with the panel. So you don't want to have, you know, flush on this side and then have to have a six inch overhang on, on one side because one, that doesn't look symmetrical. And then uh, two, the wind could come up and, you know, flip it over. You don't want to give the wind too much of an edge uh, or, or a lip to, uh, you know, play with. So we're going to use as much uh, as we can to um, uh, try to create it so it's tight to the, the roof line here, the beam here, uh, so that we can make sure that everything comes out uh, as symmetrical as possible on both sides and across this whole 24 foot span.
All right, I am done for today. Another marathon session. I've been here for about six hours. I used every piece of lumber, which is now up here on the roof as the framework. I just need to come back and use these panels to finish the build. Really excited with how it's coming out. Let's take a look at the progress report before we call it a day. So I'm back downtown Phoenix first thing this morning. Yesterday we finished all the framing here and today I wanna focus on finishing the whole carport and getting these big heavy panels into place. Each one is about 17 pounds. I have them laid out here on the ground. Again, we have 16 of them to cover the entire over 300 square foot roof. So I wanna show you what it looks like up top after we did all the framing and then we can get started on these panels. So let's take a peek up the ladder real quick. Take a look at our handiwork. Ah, all right, so everything is in place and then I can work on getting these panels put up across the top. I really am excited with how everything came out. And I also noticed that in putting everything together, the uh, structure has become a lot more solid, which is exciting to see because when, again, when we put a whole roof made out of metal panels, it's gonna create a sail effect when the wind comes under it. So you wanna make sure that everything is nice and tight. You know, of course you want a little bit of give in a storm, but you don't want things to come flying apart. So now we can get started on putting these panels together. So here's what I wanted to do before I start screwing everything in. And I wanted to line up every single panel, all eight of them on this bottom row here to check to see what our ultimate width is gonna be again, because it's hard to predict. I, I ended up making this pretty perfectly because it's 24 feet and then uh, 24 divided by three feet is eight. So we got eight panels across the top here and we just have about two inches of overhang. And I'll walk you through down to this side where we're gonna have the same level of overhang over here. So again, you don't wanna give the wind too much to pick up. And we're just gonna do about a three to four inch overhang on this side. And then we'll figure out what we need to do on this side to cover up the overhang of these two by sixes. Uh, again, probably a, uh, looks like about a six inch overhang, possibly a little bit more. But uh, I wanted to make sure that we took care of this so that I have an understanding of how everything's gonna fit together before I start screwing it into place and then have to redo my work. So it's looking really tight, I'm excited about it. So now we can get to screwing it into place. So super important, make sure that you do the back panel first, you know, the, the whatever is closest towards the end of the slope and then put the top panel on, or if you're doing three or four panels or whatever, so that the water doesn't have a chance to go backwards through the, the, the seam here as the panels connect. So I uh, just wanted to call that out to, to make sure that the water flows nicely all the way through to the back. Now for screwing everything together, I purposely chose these meaty two by sixes so that we had uh, more surface area to find places to put screws. And, and again, it just, the more connection points you have, the sturdier the structure is gonna be. So if you have a framing hammer, what you can do, oftentimes there's a magnetic connection point and then put the screw in there. These are, are, are pretty thick panels. Um, it requires you to hammer in the point uh, and then you can get to using your drill. So again, if you're uh, familiar with framing, you might be able to pop it in there. If not, you might just have to tap it with, the, with your hammer to get it uh, punctured through and then you can start to screw it in. Wanted to do a quick progress check. I'm almost halfway done. I have the street side almost completed and then I have another half to go. It's taken me about two hours 
to get this far. It's honestly about 20 minutes a panel just because I'm up and down off the ladder and you know finding the two by sixes to screw in. So you kind of have to do it very methodically and strategically. Um, but I really like these panels and they're very easy to use. You can see they just slide into place and then the ridges all connect. So it makes it, makes it uh, able to interlock and, and come together really securely. So I like that very much. So I just need to put this, this is my eighth panel. And then again, eight more to go on this side. So let's talk about the screws that I'm gonna be using for this project. These are specially designed for these steel panels. And this comes with an O-ring, which acts as a seal to make it waterproof. So you're just gonna sink it through the panel into the wood. You don't wanna over tighten it so you blow out the seal. You just want it to be snug. And this should allow the, all the panels to be waterproof and stand the test of time. starting to get pretty hot out here. I'm glad I'm doing this before the hot summer month. So I finished all 16 panels. I actually ended up with 17 panels. I think Home Depot gave me a free one. So I, I don't know what to do with that, but a little freebie. So everything is done. I will show you the final product in just a second, but I wanna paint these uh, fresh boards up here, the same gray color as the rest of it to give it that finished look. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we can reveal the final product. So here's the ultimate test. Is it waterproof? Is it waterproof? Let's test it out. Looks like we did it, folks. Not a drip on the inside, beautiful. Now I also wanted to show you guys the actual top of the roof so you can see how that came out as well as all the lines on the, on the four sides of it. It came out really tight and I wanted to show you the finished product there. And then we can take a look at how my car looks parked under it in all this beautiful shade here. So a couple more shots and then I'll let you go. So here's the roof line right here. You can see how straight it is all the way across. We have a, about a, uh, I would call it an eight inch overhang all the way down. And then on the side here, it's about a two inch overhang all the way down. Same thing on the back, about four inch overhang. See how straight it is. It came out really, really nice. I'm really excited about it. Let's go see how my car looks underneath the carport. Just pulled the car under the carport. Again, this is 14 feet wide. So I think the average car is maybe 14 to 16 feet. So it is almost entirely in the shade right now. It looks really, really nice. I love how that looks. Plenty of clearance as well. So I'm really excited with how this came out. Also, I built in rear gate clearance because this is about eight feet tall up here. So this will fit your normal SUV uh, with about a foot of clearance, which is really nice. So always keep that in mind, you know, for the space of the vehicles that you're trying to park under here. So this is really spacious. Each is about 11 and a half feet wide right here. So, you know, you don't have to worry about doors banging or anything like that. So again, 24 feet across 
and uh, turned out really, really nicely. All right, so I finally finished. I used over 200 screws. This is all that's left. Just a few screws left out of this bag of 250. So I'm pretty confident that this thing is going to be very, very sturdy and hopefully withstand all of the monsoons that come this summer and fall. If you guys could give me a like on the video, I would greatly appreciate it. Let's go take a look at our final product. Thanks again for watching guys. I really appreciate it until the next DIY project. We'll see you later.